I look over the congregation, there's another question here. Question a song. That if you know the Lord is keeping you, what you got to worry about? It's just a little bit of that. We used to sing it all the time. If you know the Lord's keeping you, what you got to worry about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, why don't you sing it? sing it quite often. If you know the Lord is keeping you, what do you have to worry about? Don't we sometimes worry needlessly? We worry about things that we shouldn't be worrying about while we are trying to figure it out. God has already worked it out. Oh, I tell you, God is so good. Hallelujah. I had some uncles that they sang in a quartet. They used to sing this song, and only trust him. Only trust him. He'll give you rest. You only trust him. Right in the midst of trial. In the midst of afflictions, he will never cease to be God. Hallelujah. The Bible says he's rich in mercy, rich to all who call on him. Another song, uh, another verse says, call on me in the day of trouble and I will answer you and show you. Could it be that his hands want to really be released to help somebody today? Uh, that he's been looking in, like the Bible says, for the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect or sincere toward him. Call upon him. Look at your neighbor and say, call on him, neighbor. He's available. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Oh, my God. He's so good. He's so wonderful. David said, my soul, magnify the Lord. I'm feeling quite well right now. God has been too good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Through trials, tribulations, persecutions, oppressions, lack, afflictions, God never ceased to be God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, and he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, who 
forgive it, all thine iniquities, who heal it all of thy diseases. Somebody ought to preach about it all now. <laughs> who redeems our lives from destruction and places a song in our hearts. Praise him, all ye saints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The psalmist says, because the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures throughout all generations. Sometimes I don't feel like praising God, but he says, we walk by faith and not by sight. Sometimes the situation looks deplorable and sometimes the situation says you don't have a lot to praise God for. But uh, I heard one fellow said, I'm vertical. I'm vertical. I'm living and I'm walking. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, I spoke to one lady. I said, it's good to see you. And she said, it's good to be seen. You're horizontal, then you can't. The Bible said the dead can't praise him. But while I have a chance, you know, sometimes when, you know, if we follow the spirit, every time I kind of want to go there, it's like he said, just take some time and give me some praise and glory first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, you know, you know we, 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 we're not in the ritual or the, uh, the system of uh, uh, predicting God. Isn't that right? God can work in the beginning or the end. He can work before the word comes, or he can work during the word, or he can work after the word. Hallelujah. He, he works as he wills. Isn't that right? Thank you, Lord. Praise him all, ye land. Glory to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. And give the Lord his due. Mm, mm, mm. Glory to God. Word of God says he's worthy. Don't let him don't let him plead with us now that he's worthy to be praised. Isn't that right? Give him his due. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. If you look at the book of Revelation, you see those that praised him. It says, Worthy. Nobody else was worthy to open this book. But they looked around and saw only Jesus says, worthy is the lamb to open the book. The book of life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cry out hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. I heard the songwriter says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Hallelujah. That same psalmist says, weeping may endure 
for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. In the book of Psalm 150, they were in the house of the Lord, and he began to say, praise him with the high-sounding cymbals. Praise him with the low-sounding cymbals. Praise him with the drums. Praise him with the string instruments. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. One of the greatest wisdoms that a Christian can uh, be endowed with is the understanding that God is worthy 24-7 to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. He's a good God, hallelujah. He's deserving of his due. Hallelujah. Job said, in all of my holy times will I wait until my change comes. Hallelujah. Learning to trust in God. Not always easy, but it's beneficial. It helps us. It's they that trust in the Lord shall not be moved. Trials can move you. Afflictions can move you. Circumstances, lack can move you. But they that trust in the Lord will be anchored and stable. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Ooh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You know, when God wants praise, uh, if, I, if I don't praise him, then he's going to choose somebody else to praise him. I, hallelujah. I, I feel like praising him. Hallelujah. God is worthy, saints, to be praised. Hallelujah. And I heard one writer says, from the rising of the sun, the going down of the same the Lord's name is to be praised hallelujah hallelujah the queen of Sheba visited Solomon and when she visited Solomon she had heard about Solomon but after she had gone and seen the magnificence of this kingdom that he was ahead of. She said, I heard about it. But what I heard, the half hadn't been told. In other words, what I've seen exceeds anything that I heard about this great kingdom. And that kingdom only reflects the true kingdom. And in his kingdom, the trees gave praise to God. And in, in, in this kingdom that we're in, the, the Bible says the trees clap their hands unto the Lord. The birds sing unto the Lord. He feeds everything that he's brought into this world. God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. good Savior. He had the kindness to say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes you look for faithfulness in people and sometimes you can be disappointed. Isn't that right? The thing I like about him is his phone line is never too 
busy. You, 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 you know, I, live, I came from the country, and in the country they had party lines. And, you know, you try to get on the line, and somebody's on the line, you hear them chatting, and you got to wait until they get off the line to try to get a phone call through. But let me tell you about God. God's line is not a party line. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I can call him up whenever I need him. If it's late in the midnight hour, when everybody's asleep, if I'm troubled in mind, I can call him up. One songwriter says, I, I've got a telephone in my bosom, and I can call him up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, David, David said, David said, I, 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 I've been young and now I'm old. Seen a lot of things. Been a lot of places. But one thing I've never seen. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed big and bread. Somebody ought to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Moses said this about him that he is fearful in praise. Moses learned that when he praised God and the people praised God, God showed up and did something that mortal man could not do. Oh, saints of God, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good. Somebody asked me, why do you praise him? And I found out that praises helps to synchronize wandering thoughts that I have sometime when I praise him he pull down the thoughts that are contrary to right thinking hallelujah I wonder if you'll lift your hands and praise him a little bit with me he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the Lord's great name is to be praised hallelujah hallelujah Glory to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, he's good, he's worthy. Hallelujah. I don't care what the circumstances are trying to tell you I, I don't care God is good God is good God is faithful in all of his ways hallelujah give him the glory that's due his name hallelujah hallelujah glory to God glory to God hallelujah glory be to God hallelujah oh yes Lord Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. Glory to God. I heard the psalmist says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Happy is the man that trusts in him. Hallelujah. What you're trusting in today, saints, is your trust in the Lord. If your trust is in the Lord, you can lift your hands and bless Him. Because everything going to turn out all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. 
My God, hallelujah. 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 None like him on the earth. Hallelujah. The rock in a weary land. Shelter in a time of storm. The Bible says good and upright is the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, I think that we, we, we need to get in rehearsal while we're down here. Because you see, where you going and where I'm going, it's going to be a lot of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You say, well, what you talking about? I, I read in Revelations, it says that 20 and 4 elders took their crowns off. Whatever, whatever glory, whatever victory that had been wrought, they realized that it was God that brought it to them and they took their crown off their head and they bowed down to give God the glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Heaven is a wonderful place going to be a lot of praise and adoration unto the one that sits on the throne. Hallelujah. Isaiah saw him one day and when he saw him, he said, I also saw the Lord seated on the throne. High and lifted up and his train didn't fill the temple. What was his train? His train was his glory. His glory did fill the temple. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we're going to see the Lord do these miracles. We have to prepare the way for the entrance of this great king. Bible says he inhabits he lives in he dwells in praise if I want the best that God has for me I must understand this God inhabits the praise of his people when God sees a praising people it's like God says that's where I belong right in the midst of of my glory. Give him some praise, somebody. Oh, he is good. Because his mercy endures forever. None is like him. None has been so good to my soul. None has been so faithful to me. I say, I don't know why you praise him so much. Well, you, you, you see, you weren't there when I was in the wilderness. You, 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 you weren't there, you see, when I had nobody to turn to. You, you weren't there when my back was against the wall and, and my soul cried out unto God and he heard. He delivered me from all, all of my troubles. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God, glory be to God. He's deserving of his praise. When I stand here today, I've come through trials. I've come through oppressions, many Many sleepless nights, but the Lord brought me through. Hallelujah. The Lord brought me through. The Lord brought me through. The Lord brought me through. And he'll bring you through every trial, every circumstance. I feel like praising God yet. Hallelujah. I never leave you with anything today. Your 
must know that his creation must praise him. If the trees can praise him, if the birds can praise him, if the animal can praise him, then his highest creation that he's made man, can we not praise him too? Hallelujah. trustworthy, someone is solid hallelujah, unmovable I bless the Lord this day because he's been good to me it was really no goodness of my own but by the grace of God that I stand here today giving him glory Hallelujah. Could have been dead and gone. And in my grave. But it was God that told death. Stand back and behave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. say much about it and the anointing has already come God is always deserving of praise hallelujah you know you can praise your way out of a situation if you're in a situation and look like you can't get out of it ask yourself this question have I been praising have I been complaining to God you see if I've been praising God if Satan has had a grip on my leg or my arm or my back then, then he can't stand praise you see it irritates him to no end so when you praise God all of a sudden he begins to lose his grip I remember God showing me that showed me a lot of things of what praising him will do. Try it. Don't take my word for it. Praise him for yourself. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let me give you a little something right briefly here in 1 John chapter 3. If you will turn there, I'm going to read a little bit before we uh, Conclude. The Lord is putting a praise in your system that won't wait. And it's in you. And when you sense that Holy Ghost saying, daughter, I want you to praise me now. I'm going to cause the glory to move in when you, you, when you praise me. Then I don't care what's going on. Then you begin to magnify him uh, from the depths of your soul. And when you do, then the glory of the Lord is going to come um, and begin to minister unto people. Um, yokes are going to be destroyed. And hallelujah. You, you see, that, God said, it's that kind of anointing I put on you. But let it come out of your belly. God is good. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. He's a good God. He's a good God. I, I believe if we're going to get the best out of a service, we got to do it God's way. 
And sometimes God sits outside of his own house because people say, no, you, you can't work at this point here. This has got to be done. You've got to lift the offering right now. God said, but, but maybe uh, I, if I could just kind of get in right there. No, 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 you, you just wait. I said, but, but it's my house. So I don't care. You, 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 you just got to wait. You got to follow protocol. <laughs> Come on, let's give him some glory. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's been good to us. Don't let Satan deceive you into thinking that God is against you. God is for you. God is for you. Let's look at what John says in 1 John. If you, if you found John 3, stand with me briefly. Beginning at verse 28 in chapter 2. And reading down through the third verse of chapter 3. Let's read responsibly. 28 says, And now little children abide in him, that when he shall appear ye may have confidence not be ashamed before him at his coming. And this is the verse of emphasis. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. three, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Precious Father, thank you so much for every mercy shown to us. We thank you for the body of Christ. We bless and honor you, Lord God. We're here to worship you and to give glory and honor to your name. Thank you for your holy word. Let it come forth and minister, O oh God, the, the remainder of these moments according to what you will. And we'll give you the praise. It's in Jesus' name we ask. And everyone said, amen. God bless you. The word behold. To see. Consider. Perceive. Look. Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Behold, and then the, the phrase what manner of, the original meaning it says of this what manner of means from what country. And later became a point of awe or astonishment or admiration later in meaning. But initially it meant what manner, what, what country? You know, remember in the Old Testament, uh, one of the people said, what manner of people were they? From what country? They had a dress code that reflected people of God. And the, the one that responded said they, they, they look like saints or children of a king. That's what they had to say about them, Israel. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Perceive, consider. Pay attention to the quality of love that the Father has bestowed upon us to call us sons of God. It, it, it's, uh, uh, it was uh, this point where John, when he was in his theme, 
in keeping with 28 and that some of the other things that he was mentioning, if you are righteous, then your works, your fruit, your life is going to reflect who you are. And, uh, but in keeping with that, he was talking and it seemed like he had a moment of praise and admiration and astonishment. It's like, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. And uh, so it was one of those things. And uh, I was reading one commentary, Jack Hayford's commentary. Uh, he said, John expresses astonishment at God's love and regenerating believers and experience. The world cannot understand. The world cannot understand who we are. They don't know. They've not had that salvation experience. So you don't get around people that can't appreciate who you are and what you have going for you if you don't know what you have. Isn't that right? Because you'll not learn it behind those that don't understand. But you've been born again. We've been born again. We're born of another spirit. And we're different. And so the Bible makes it clear that the world doesn't understand that. All right, praise the Lord. And as I was reading here, the comment, one of the commentaries was sharing, some have had bad earthly fathers so that they have a difficult time of feeling the warmth and comfort and love that the word should bring. It should bring comfort and healing. But the word father sometimes can mean something negative to others. But nonetheless, God is a good father. And if you can think of a, a dream father, an ideal father, even though you didn't have one, uh, love you more than life and always there for you when you need him and who, who love to provide for you and who is interested in every aspect of your life. And that's what God wants to be to and for us that kind of father. And you know, when Jesus came, there's not hardly anything mentioned in the Old Testament about father. God is father. But when Jesus came, the writer was saying, he sought to convey the idea of the fatherhood of God and, and to show the personality of God because Israel had a concept of God that was different. And so Jesus came, now he's painting another picture and showing the personality of God. And so you look at, uh, as he, in the Sermon on the Mount, he has a lot to say about your father, your father, your father, which is in heaven. And, and uh, let's see if I can read a couple of excerpts here. Okay. Okay. Matthew 5. 5 says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Then verse one in chapter six says, take heed that you do not your arm before men to be seen of them. Otherwise you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. And then he goes on verse six in chapter six, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou shut, hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. And your father, which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And in verse eight says, be, not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth the, what things you have need of before you ask him. Verse 9 says, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our father which art in heaven. So he comes to really show the personality of God the father, because Israel was not used to that. The God that they knew and served was not like a father. He was a God that, you know, he didn't tolerate sin and he didn't, 
You know, he wouldn't do this in his room. If they didn't obey, they could be destroyed. So now here Jesus comes on the scene and paints another picture of a loving father, a father who cares for us. And Matthew 6, uh, what he says in Matthew 6, he says, no man can serve two masters, for either he'll hate the one and love the other, or else he'll hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And uh, talk about, uh, take their, uh, therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fires of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. Nor gather into bonds, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are ye not much better than they? So Jesus understood the importance of creating the right image of who God really is. Isn't that right? And it's so important today because many times and many of our backgrounds simply uh, uh, makes us not able to grasp the goodness of a God that is unlike mortal man. And so Jesus knew that, he understood that, and even today's time, God seeks to paint the right picture of God and as a personality. God is a, has a personality, and he's a good God. He's a loving father. He's a caring father. And the term father, one who protects and provides. And um, so that's, that's what Jesus did because he knew that we, we really need to have the right understanding and concept of of God who he is. Nobody's going to come to a God uh, uh, that they, you feel like if you don't come right, he'll strike you dead. Nobody. And uh, so that was part of what ha happened in the Old Testament. They could come to the holy place, but nobody was allowed to come into the holy of holies except the high priest alone. And then if he went into the holy of holies wrong or of sin, then nobody could go into that sacred place and get him out so they would tie a rope around him so that if he went into the uh, holy of holies once a year to offer atonement if he went in there wrong then he would just be slain but there was a bigger problem because he had to stay there if they didn't, if they didn't put a rope around him in case he didn't come out that's how that's how they did it and uh and so israel has this image of a god so you try and imagine somebody excited about going to the presence of some God like that. You don't know whether or not you're measured up. You don't know whether you're in right standing with him. So you'd rather not come close to him. But God is not like that. He just chose to limit their understanding at that time as to who he was until the appointed time to the fullness of the hour when grace would come. And so now he wants us to understand I'm not the God of the Old Testament, the picture that you've painted. I am a loving father. I've always been that. This is the full hour when I'm revealing who I really am through my son, Jesus Christ. And so God shows himself to us in a way that he wants us to understand. So the word behold means look, contemplate. So the believer is aroused in wonderment. Wow. Sons of God. That's who we are. Sons of God. I mean, you, you, you can be son of a president who is well known. You can be son of, uh, of some governor and so on. And that, that's, that's okay. But we're not talking that demeaning uh, idea. We're talking... A God that knows everything there is to know about everything. A God that is everywhere, omnipresent, omniscient, all-knowing. A God that's all-powerful. God that created the universe. That God can say live and people will live. He can say die and everything will die. We're talking to somebody like that and he loves us enough to call us his children. So John said, oh, my God, what an awesome thing to consider. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But here, John, he has a purpose here now in what he's sharing because he sought to deal with the false teachers that were teaching uh, a portion of narcissism. And uh, uh, so he wanted 
to assure the believers of their salvation. And that which he began to talk about was to assure them and bring assurance in the hearts of those. And so as I was reading here, the, the uh, information that was given uh, concerning the direction of the false teachers, the false teachers attempted to create an overwhelming feeling of inadequacy on the part of the Christians. That sound familiar? Like somebody you know, the devil? They attempted to erode their self-confidence. That was, that was the false teachers. And this self-depreciation would then prepare them for a receptive attitude toward the special promises of the new movement in which they were projected. A new theology of the new movement. So in order for them to um, get a mind that they wanted to embrace this old this, this theology that they were projecting, the, the narcissists and, and uh, the false teachers, they had to try to uh, make them feel very inadequate with the Christ salvation that they had. And so they attempted to do that. And John, being an apostle, uh, was able to see it and then get the wisdom of God to share with them, to assure them, uh, you, you know, you, you got the right thing. I don't care what it looked like. You you got the right thing. You have the right God. It's not a believe, uh, unbelieving God. He's, he's or somebody that's incapable. And you you're not into falsehood. You have the real deal. And so he set out to begin to help them to understand. Like the false teachers, Satan attempts to erode our confidence by his lies, to open us to his deceptive. Tactics. And that's the strategy that Satan tends to be using even at the church now. He, uh, when sometimes God don't come through like we want him or as fast as we feel like he should. Now remember, we have a, an image of who he is, right? So our, sometimes our image is not in line with who he really is because the Bible says he's long-suffering. David said, I have to wait on the Lord. I have waited patiently for the Lord. So that means sometimes God will cause you to wait until certain things are put in place. Isn't that right? And so uh, not understanding that, if a person, if God, they prayed and God don't come through form all of a sudden, so the devil comes with this lies and begins to say, if God cared for you, this wouldn't happen. If God cared for you, this wouldn't happen. And so he's got a string of lies to erode our confidence in the living God. But John began to tell you, brother, this is the truth. It's amazing to think that God would make us his children. Who are we that God would make us his children? Somebody special. God cares. That's the kind of love that he had. And so uh, he make us to want to doubt God's word or his truth and his love. Doubt the words of prophecy that God gave to us uh, when we were needing such a word and from God. He, he comes to erode our confidence so that we can't put our trust in God and begin to magnify God when things don't look right. But God is calling us to walk by faith and not by sight. Isn't that right? Uh, hallelujah. That's a principle in the kingdom of our God. The just shall live by faith. So grabbing a hold of that, then we walk by faith and we receive the blessings of God. The false teachers, their most fundamental feature of their doctrine has to do with the teaching about the person and ministry of Christ, Jesus Christ. Now, if they were going to succeed in their false doctrine, they had to speak falsely about our center of faith. And that is Christ. So that's what they attacked. So the, the writer says, when there is distortion concerning the center, talking about our belief system in Christ, there will always be distortion at the edges. In other words, when the theological center is shifted, the results always has an ethical implication. In other words, you, you find those that really don't give full credence to the fact that God is good and he's love, but he's also holy? If they do not embrace the truth about Jesus morally and ethically, somehow or another, their lives are going to be in some form of repeated sin. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Well, John began to, wanted to eradicate in that kind of thought. 
God is holy. If you're righteous, he said, if, 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 if you believe that he's righteous, then you're going to live according to what you believe. Isn't that right? That was the point he made. But we're not here to, to project that. Point. The point I want to make is this is the false teacher was trying to erode their confidence. And so John was begin, had begun to speak to them concerning the truth that you're in the faith. You're God's children. And so uh, when our image of God is distorted, our relationship will be distorted. We talked about that. And the fact that the word that says bestow, the perfect tense indicates further that the gift is a permanent possession of the child of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. It's a gift from God, right? It is a gift from God. We, we, we you know, we've said this a number of times. It can't be something that we can earn. So John's message is both pastoral and authoritative. He refuses to become entrapped by details concerning the future. You know, some people, they, want to, they really want to be a futurist. They just really, really want to have all the facts about the future and want to try to be a scholar and things of this nature. But it's not so much that we know the future except that we know that we belong to God and that, if we con that God's love will, con will sustain us now and in the future, Right? Yeah, you don't have to have all the answers when people are asking you about the future. We know the Lord is coming soon. So John had this same idea. And he says, this is what he said. He says, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself even as he's pure. When you have an expectation that the Lord could come at any moment, then you want to live in a way that if he comes today or tomorrow, I'll be ready. Isn't that right? There's a readiness. There's a readiness when we have our expectations in God. I don't want, if the Lord should come today and I'm in, a, in sin and I don't want to give it up, uh, then I'm really not looking for God's coming. Isn't that right? I'm not looking for God's coming. If, I, if I'm willing to live a life that's sinful and I'm supposed to be a child of God, right? So John said, if you know that he's righteous, you know that everybody that's born of him is righteous also, will do righteous. And so that, anyway, that, that's enough of that. But uh, uh, then he paused and began to just, oh my God, what a, what a thought. God makes us his children. And uh, so we beloved children of God. We're God's children because of the love that the Father has for us. We live, we leave the future in the hands of God with hope and confidence. The key reality for our future is that he loves, his love lasts. And our relationship with him lasts too. Right? Amen. Okay, now the thing that I want to conclude with is this year. The astonishment of this kind of love is the awesome, the wonder of his love. It is a higher quality of love. It's not like what we've been accustomed to. It's a higher quality. It, uh, uh, the Bible says it's better than silver and gold. Uh, it, 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 it's more valuable. This, this quality is more valuable than just love. Proverbs says all the things that you can desire cannot compare to him, right? It's a longer lasting love. It doesn't endure for a little while. So I, can't, I'm I can't tolerate this. It's everlasting. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Now abided faith, hope, and charity, but these three, these three, and the greatest of these is charity. It moves right on out of this life into the other life. So it's lasting, long lasting. And, it, and I, I say it's like elastic. You know, you, you take a rubber band or something elastic, you stretch it and it comes right back in place, right? You stretch it and it comes right back in place. God's love is like that, you see. He keeps coming back. You know, sometimes people reject God, but he keeps right on coming back. He is a God that cares. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He keeps coming back. It's agape style, agape love. 
What do you mean? It needs no real response to be what it is. Ooh. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, we didn't have to be righteous. It needs no response. Hallelujah. It can be love because God himself is love. Glory to God. And look, and you see, God don't look at me and say, boy, you're a hard man to love. With all of my shortcomings, but God is love. He just shines because that's the nature of God. He's good. And whether I receive it or not, it's still love. He don't need my response in order to be what it is. Isn't that right? But you know, we, we kind of, we need, we need, we want to love people and if they kind of reject our love, we kind of get a little attitude in a hurry. You know what I'm saying? But his love is not like that. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Glory to God. John said it like this in 1 John. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. See, that's love. Hallelujah. It don't need our response. Come on, somebody give God some praise. And his love is non-abandoning. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. talking about God's love saints important to know who we're serving and God asked him one of the prophets he said will, will a mother forsake her child and then he says though some of them may but I will not forsake you that's what he says to Israel so he has a non-abandoning love. If the devil said, well, God is not there, he won't show up, but God is always there because he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And God's love doesn't vacillate. To vacillate means to waver between different opinions or actions in, in, in decision or indecisiveness. God's love is not like that. Isn't that right? It's steadfast. Steadfast love. And then there's a fatherly love. His love is fatherly. He provides, he protects, and he disciplines us. He doesn't look and see us going the wrong way as his children and then says, well, they're going to learn. But he will come to us and he will talk to us and show us where we're going wrong. He has a fatherly love. He cares for us saints. He's a good savior. Hallelujah. He makes us secure with his love. And then John, Paul said the love of God constrains us, uh, which means to compel. And the original, it comes from a root word, which means to hold together. I like that. To grip tight. To leave no option. While Paul was saying the love constrains us, that we judge that um, if one died for all, then we're all dead. And uh, basically, he said that we, we, we that the, 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 the opinion and the wisdom of God was that we no longer live lives selfishly, but to him who died for us. So this love compels us. Um, it, it, it puts us up in a way. And when sometimes we want to be selfish, he won't let us be selfish. It constrains us and we don't want to talk uh, to others about God's goodness and his love. Uh, Paul said he felt compelled. There's something about that love that it motivates us to do what's right. That love is a good love. And, and I like the, por the portion that he said it, it holds us together. Some, you know, it is God that keeps us. We're not keeping ourselves. You know, sometimes you feel spiritual. You feel like I'm, I'm, I'm a good. Uh. No, no, no. You're not keeping yourself. It is God. And the Bible says in the book of Psalms, He said, "He that keepeth thee will not slumber nor sleep." That means God is a keeper. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Then he says, Paul said, he, he that has begun a good work in you, God is our keeper. Isn't that right? Bible says he's the refuge and strength of every present help. Love of God. 
Hallelujah. Kept, Peter says, kept by the power of God unto faith. Then there's a deep, there's a deep personal love. This love is different. He hears the cry of his little ones. Deep personal love. When his children are in trouble and they cry unto him, God responds. He responds. God, God does not deal too easy with one of his children in trouble and crying out to him in faith. God will come to their rescue. So he says, call on me in a time of trouble and I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not. God, this is the kind of God we serve. Hallelujah. He loves the saints. He loves you. I don't care what situation may tell you, but he loves you today. Hallelujah. And so John got caught up in what manner, oh, what manner of love God has bestowed on us that he would call us sons of God. God, but you know, I, I, I didn't do it all right. He said, the, the love that he has, uh, it is the Father's love bestowed upon us, and he calls us children. That's who we are. That's who we are. We're children of God. And because we're children of God, we can walk with him, we can serve him, and give him praise uh, even when things don't look right. Uh, hallelujah. Because he's deserving of his praise. What kind of love is this? Hallelujah. That we should be called children of God. Therefore the world don't know us uh, because they knew him, didn't know him. Father, we thank you for that quality of love. Uh, calling us your children, Lord. But we, we were we wayward. We were rebellious. We were, Lord, but, but you call us your children. You love us so much. So we deserve to give you glory. I don't know about you, but I feel like we should praise God and give him thanks for his goodness. And hallelujah, hallelujah. What love. What manner of love. God has bestowed upon us that we should be called God's children. That's who we are. You're God's property. You belong to God. God is in your corner. As you stand today, hallelujah, he's good, and he wants you to know how much he loves us. And he wants to reassure us no matter what we're going through, we may go through more before the days are over. But one thing we want to be sure of, that God loves us. And he will never abandon us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He's gracious and kind. Father, we love you. We thank you. We magnify your son. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for the grace. Thank you. Thank you for reassuring us today of that wonderful love. While we're standing, before we conclude, there's a touch that God wants to touch somebody today with his love. God's love will anchor us in the midst of things we go through. And God's love is boundless. It'll plow through sorrows and guilt and hatred and jealousy and envy, fears. It'll plow through that to the person that will call on him in their state. And God, I need you. God, I need you. I can't break this thing. I can't shake this habit. I, I, I tried in my own, but I need your help. When we look unto him, hallelujah, the Bible says looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So that love is boundless and it'll plow right on through and it'll get to the heart of that person that's crying out to him for help. Hallelujah. Today, while we're standing, you may not be familiar with that love. 
you may say, I've never had such a love. And I heard a lot of things about God. Many of them are false. But I've shared with you the, the truth of God's word. And there's someone here that needs a touch today. Before you go on your way, we're not going to make a long time of waiting, but just if you feel that desire in your heart that you just need that touch in the midst of the reassurance that you heard from the word. Just make your way to the altar briefly. We're not going to prolong it. Father, we thank you. Thank you for loving on your people. Thank you for the great grace of God. Thank you for healing the souls of your people. You're our refuge and strength. You know what we face every day. But you tell us that you care like no one else care. And we honor you now. And give your precious name the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, what amazing love, amazing grace. Hallelujah, Jesus.